forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. It's in the trailer for the Netflix uh, four-part documentary um, where you say the age you become famous is when you stop to develop. And I'd heard this before, that the actor Eddie Marsan, his wife is um, a Janine, a makeup artist, and her experience was, yeah, that they stop developing. Do, do, you, do you believe that? Yeah, I, I, there was a, a, a thing that I did on my, on my Instagram, a drawing that I did that said, they say that you stop maturing the day you become famous, and I think they're stinky poo-poo heads. <laughs> And um, yeah, I, I am, I am forever sixteen, very much so. And that's because everything turns upside down. Everything is done for you. You don't have to develop. Yeah, arrested development. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. went to the. Um, I'm not proud to say this, but I went to the supermarket by myself in Switzerland the other day, and um, I went in there and. I, I, I walked into town very confidently because I'm not, ve I'm not very often by myself, but I was in Switzerland, I was by myself, and I had to go down to the supermarket to buy things. And I got in there, I had a panic attack, and came out with uh, two boxes of all brown and a pack of salt vinegar crisps. <laughs> so what's happening? So you have a panic attack? It wasn't a, it wasn't happening? a full on panic attack. I just went in and well, you went, can't make a decision. I just don't know what what do you do? Because you're, you're very rarely on your own. Very rarely on my own. And I've had a chef since I was. I've had a chef. <laughs> always. That'll be the title. I've had a chef. I've had a chef. Always. Always. That must be lovely. Yeah, it is. Great food, healthy food all yeah, the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, so today... It's, it's absolutely incredible, but also at the same time, it goes along with the big life that yeah. I have made for myself that is that constantly needs um, servicing. Yes. You know, so when you say, surely the enough, yeah. the bigger, you know, it's like, no, I, I have... My, my dreams became much bigger than they've ever been. I, you don't I, need any more houses, though. No, 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 no. And it, it's not about, you know, look, if if it all... I, I, I'm much like a lot of people where I, I work for this year's money. Right, right. You know, if, yeah. it, if it stopped, yeah. you know, there is... You know, there is three houses that need servicing that uh, will not be serviced if I right. don't go to I work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look, yeah, yeah. I could pare everything down and everything's mm. fine. Mm. I, I'm not saying that financially I'm fearful mm. or not respectful of the lofty position that I find yeah, myself yeah. in. Yeah. But I've created a massive life that needs yeah. that needs attending to financially. But going back to what we were saying well, about enough. No, yeah. no, it, it's really? yeah, I, I'm I'm creating. Uh, this is why when you when we sat down before it started and it was saying, do you want to have your own YouTube channel? I don't understand why you wouldn't. You know, I know that you said oh, to yourself, you yeah. said to you, you said, I, I'm, I'm not 15, I'm not 18. But that that doesn't matter because I'm sure that somebody like you mm. is creating things all of the time. Well, only in my head. I, yes, ex but, yeah, but but I'm not very good. at I'm not very good at. See, I'm that's that thing. I think is a curse and a blessing. The blessing is that I'm not beset with demons. But I don't think I fulfil my potential because I'm quite, I'm pretty comfortable, and I have a lovely life, and I do enough. See, see, I see. I have a, have I, I have a compulsion to create. Yeah, and yeah. I, 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 but I kind of wish I did in a way because I think I could be creating more things. I mean, I've not really written anything properly since I co-wrote Marion and Jeff and co-wrote Human Remains. I do my tours, but that's just a gathering together of bits and bobs. And I think, why don't I, ah, yeah, why don't I go sit well, down well, and do you're, it? Well, if, you're, if your whole being and your whole stock is about being content, mm. and what mm. you're talking about is happiness, yes. which is actually the 
the thing that we're we're all looking but for. But the but I will say the counter to to being content because I love pottering as well. You see, I'm very happy just finding little jobs okay, to do at but, home. But this is that my pottering is creating. Ah. So my potter pottering is um, drawing. Oh. Thinking up a funny. Yeah. Um, so that's great with Instagram now because your Instagram, because obviously the other way we, the, we're doing this because I ran into Robbie at a mutual friend's birthday party. And uh, so here we are. And thank you. Pleasure. And you said, have you seen my Instagram? And someone, well, there we are. Someone as big as you wants actually going, have you seen my Instagram? Yeah. You could be forgiven for thinking. You would just do it and you would go, well, if someone sees it, they see it. If they don't, they don't. It was very charming no, wait, that but, you would go, oh, yeah, but, look at but, it. Okay, so you're Rob Brydon and you are a genius and you're incredibly funny. And I'm trying to do funny. Yeah. And I would like you to place your eyes on, yeah. on my funny. And, well, and, I, you know, I've looked it was at your in, funny. It's really lovely. Well, it's really bless lovely. you. Thank you. It's got it, a kind of almost we, it's a bit Wes Anderson-y at times, you know? Oh, cool. It's, which is, it's really, it's, 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 you should, you should, Look at it and see it. Yeah, but that's my pottering. My yeah, pottering okay. is actually creating stuff. And yeah. if it's not, you, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm building a hotel, seven hundred rooms in Dubai. I went, oh, literally. I thought you were saying. I think I'm building a hotel in my head, Rob. I mean, it, you know, and <laughs> no, there's a spa and there's a concierge. No, you are building a hotel. Yeah, but I build that hotel in my head, and I build what it looks like. And but I now build, it's going to be a real hotel. But now it's going to be a real hotel. Why are you doing that? Uh, because, um, I want, but that's not the only thing there is, there, there I'd are, I'd be disappointed if it was, if it was just, what, what are you talking about? You're building a hotel. Yeah. What, the Robbie Williams hotel. Well, it won't be called that. It'd be called something else. But I was in the Wynn Hotel in uh, Vegas doing a residency there. Oh, Elvis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, because you love Elvis. Yeah, I love Elvis. So yeah. doing a residency in Vegas, yeah. how often did you feel like you were Elvis? Well, it was just, you know, it was a, um, it was a, another tick and another box. And um, Come on. Incredible. Come on. Yeah, incredible. But, like, I remember... Waking up and the and it being charged two hundred and forty dollars for breakfast and it was like two croissants, a bowl of bran flakes and a coffee and I was like, "Fuck off!" Yeah. And I got really angry and then I was just like, oh, "Build my own hotel." <laughs> that was that was def that was the thought from getting angry about this breakfast costing too much and I got angry about the mini bar where if you open it and you pick something up they it charge you it they charges charge you. and I was yeah, like yeah, yeah. fuck off yeah yeah no I'd then, love it I'd love it if when your hotel opens your mini bars do that as well and I said to you hey hi Rob yeah listen I said yeah Rob when, when I looked into the economics of it I mean. <laughs> Well, you know, I'd be an totally idiot not to do it. Completely, probably completely makes sense. <laughs> it's like, no, you have to, because that facilitates the this and that facilitates the that. Yeah. But like, I then thought, um, uh, Dubai. And then I thought, ah, actually, there's no residences for artists like me in Dubai. Oh, and hello. then I thought, ah, that's oh. interesting. I'm going to do that. I'm going to start that. So, you know, that sort of idea and that level of ambition like yeah. a fire underneath yeah, my yeah, ass yeah, yeah. that is my pottering right okay that is my because i don't potter okay you know so so my sort of version of that mm -hmm. is creating a thing what can i what can i do how if i put my foot down on this car how fast does it go right you yeah. know and yeah. it's like okay so i dreamed this big what happens if i dream even bigger yeah and it, it's yeah. it's actually not um you know at the end of that is money but it's not the primary sort of driving force behind the reason to do it this is how i think so i'm the first person in my family to have ever broken the chain of being navvies or working down the pit Right. You know, so my uh, my family basically dug canals. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma, uh, which is one person ago, didn't have an indoor toilet until 1985. And she had a uh, a tin. This is not Monty Python. I'm, I'm, I'm just painting a picture. So she had a tin bath on a hook uh, and she would get the tin bath off 
and fill it full of uh, water out the tap and then boil a kettle twice to heat the to heat the bath. Now that's one person ago. Yeah. Now yeah. I think to myself, look where I find myself. I'm the first person in centuries mm. that have broken out of that social economic background. And I know the things that are offered to me, like uh, choice and like, um, you know, um, the things that are offered to me, I would like my grandkids to be offered it to and their grandkids. Mm -hmm. What can I leave behind that could, st you know, that in two generations, some fuck quit fucks it all up. <laughs> but but you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, where, 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 can I, where can I take this? How big can this go? So you are, I think there are people who uh, use, you're, you're sort of using all your resources then, by which I mean talent and drive and, and vision. You are operating at full capacity, aren't you? Um, you, you, you're not wasting. I, I, I'm not wasting any, I'm not wasting any positive thought and I'm not wasting any creativity. Yeah. Nothing gets lost. That, uh, otherwise, I spend an awful lot of time in negativity uh, with, right. uh, you know, poor mental health. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, so it, I can either be over here in poor mental health or I can be over here creating things that light a fire under me yeah. that keep me distracted from uh, what is going on over there in the unpleasant land that I sit for 12 hours on a plane and... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not a good, that's not a good place, is it? A plane, no. Long plane journey. But it, it, it gives me purpose. In 2006, I um, retired. And in 2009, my head turned to Swiss cheese and I was like, oh, I get it. I know why when people retire, yeah. they die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So henceforth, I've been given the gift of understanding having true purpose. So now I have this fire lit under me that I don't think will ever go out where I'm walking and going towards something that's over there that I'm creating here. You're going to Australia, aren't you? With yeah. your show, yeah. with your vocal warm up, with yep. your Let Me Entertain You, yep. with your careful spacing of some of the higher notes, yeah. with your subletting to the audience some of the choruses. There's, 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 one, there's one bit in the show where I always think, um, I always think I, I sing it and then it's like, oh, I didn't hit that. And then I, I just imagine people in the audience going, you can't hit that note now. And then I always say to myself, well, I couldn't hit it then either. <laughs> Do you fall in and out of love with them over the years? Um, I'm there for, to facilitate uh, an entertaining evening. Yeah. So, you know, whether I'm in love with these songs or not mm. is none of my business. You know, I, and I, I don't even think about it, to be honest. But here's the thing. They're all dead. The only thing that I've got is my next album, the next album that is coming out. They're, everything's They're dead. all dead. They're all dead. All those songs, that's all, how you see them. Yeah, They're yeah, all dead. They're, yeah, yeah. They sound very alive to me, I must say. Well, listen, and I'm glad that they are, but like I'm I'm here now. This when is... we were arranging this, I sent you that thing saying, la di da di da, uh, angels came on the other day and uh, it made me smile a very, you know, I was, that's a lovely thing, isn't it? And that's happening all the time around the oh, world. I, look, look, it's incredible and it's not lost on me yeah. how unfathomable this whole thing is. But you are going been. on to the next thing, the next Always thing, the next, the next thing, thing, the next thing. Always the next thing. Yeah. And the moment, you know, it's like I, I'm totally engrossed in this album that I'm doing. And the minute, you know, it's out there on Monday yeah. or whenever it is and it's gone, it's like, right, I'm on to the next one. That's what I was saying before. I'm absolutely terrified and I'm in control. I'm in charge of 50,000, 80,000, 20,000 people's enjoyment for an evening. Yeah. And if you feel 20,000, 50,000 or 80,000 people energy leave a stadium, it's fucking terrifying. You can feel that. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of a show or all of a sudden, 
real or imagined or whatever it is, but it's, um, you know, it's... Uh, it's you can have that in a, in a comedy show. I mean, you you can and it feels because the you, same because of the laughs. I mean, it's very easy to tell with comedy. They're laughing, they're laughing, and sometimes you go, "Oh, but they're listening, <laughs> they're, they're enjoying it." And that thing of I always remember playing. I love playing up north because the towns have identity, so so it's so it's 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 much better. But I'd done a run, and they're all going great, great. I went out somewhere. I can't remember where it was. We won't say. Yeah. Oh, I honestly can't remember. And it was as if they'd had a meeting before the show to not like it, and they'd said, "Right." We all agreed. <laughs> We're going to give it 10 to 15 minutes before we commit. Yeah, yeah. And I went out there pretty, you think, yeah. on a good run. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Yes. yes. And then you learn all those. What do you do? You learn those techniques. For me, I slow down. I don't, because the, the instinct is, is to kind of get a little bit. Well, uh, no. I, I smile and slow down and take my time in my, the hope that they go, I don't think this is very good, but he seems to be. Enjoying, enjoying it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very relaxed. It must just be me. My, mine, mine is, mine is painted face and concentrate, concentrate. You yeah. know, it's just like you know that that sort of beaming, <laughs> idiotic. <laughs> God, I'm loving this. <laughs> well, it's the same thing, but it's, yeah. it's the same but different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just project. Uh, and then, and then, and then, in my head, I'm going, "Don't drop the facade. Don't drop. Don't no, 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 no. You did. You did. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. All the don't while you're know. singing. All the while oh. while singing. This is uh, this is what's going on. They're getting the same show. Yeah. And I probably look happier. Yeah. Do you do you do you do you spot people that aren't enjoying it? The boyfriend who's only there because of his girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I put I put I pick them out. Yeah. Do you still fixate on them? Yeah. I'm, I'm over that now. If yeah, if you don't love me, I don't love me. That's something that I've I've said in this this kind of documentary is like yeah, and that is the. Well, if you're not liking this show, it's. I it's don't me. like me, you know. You? Yeah, yeah. It's like because I, you know, it's like I I know that this is a beautiful facade, uh. you know. And if you have, and then I'm I'm imagining you've seen the facade. <laughs> So you've, who, picked, so what, you've picked up on this, haven't you? But fucking don't tell anybody. But you've been so open about it, though. You've talked to so anybody who's a Robbie Williams fan will be aware of this. How does Ada navigate this? She is my wife, and I will come off stage, and even she doesn't have a clue whether A, I've enjoyed it, or B, enjoyed the audience. And on a day-to-day -day basis. She's like, she's like, I get in the car and she's like, right? And I'll either go, yeah, or I'll go, uh. Right. And she's like, I, I never, she never knows. So how did you find which, her? She's which obviously is, a really good fit for you. Well, I'd. Yeah, how did you find her then? Blind date, blind date. Was it? Yeah. Set up by a mate? Yeah, set up by a mate. Who thought, oh, she'd be, she'd be very good for Rob. Yeah. You know, and those things normally don't work, do they? Yeah, That's sort yeah. of like set up by a friend thing. Yeah. But um, uh, into our eighteenth year, that's in, and in and in rock and roll terms, dude. I I wouldn't have. Put that's money astonishing. On it. I wouldn't have put money on it. And four four children. Four kids. Yeah. What ages? The oldest one is eleven, and the youngest one is three. Yeah, Bo, Coco, Charlie, and Teddy. Wow. They travel the world with you. They have been homeschooled up until recently. Have they? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, up until recently. And they were literally dying to be yeah. educated at school. Yeah. So yeah. now they have that. And they are thriving. And they are loving it. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, yeah. It how is. Lovely. It is. And it's, um, yeah. It's, you, I, you know, when I said uh, I'd been frozen as a 16-year-old. Yes. Well, I'm probably like 17 or 18 because of them now. So you're making progress. I'm making progress, slow progress. You should say the Jonathan Ross thing, which is kind of how we're here, really. Uh, this is how we're here. Because I, when I, um, you know, up here is going too fast for me. Yeah. And I am constantly intimidated. Like, you know, I can be intimidated by my wife right. at moments throughout the day or how to, you know put this thing right that my son's going through and what can I say? And well, I'm intimidated. And uh, there's been lots of times when I've um, uh, not represented myself in the best way possible when I'm being, uh, you know, uh, intimidated. And we're on the Jonathan Ross show and I'm trying to do a, cause I'm a thing. 
well, I could do it. You come on. So 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 it's the I, I forget who the, the probably some Hollywood people did it. Then I'm at the end, and then of course singer does the song at the end, comes and joins the sofa. Yeah, over to you. And then Sat I'm next like, to me. I can do a, a joke. I've got that. I think I you know there's and and like I don't know about you, but those. Um, those interviews on those shows are terrifying. <laughs> Do you find that or not? Uh, no, I should care more. You see, I talked about this the other day with somebody. I, I, yeah, I, you I, seemed very, very at home. Well, that's a but that's a facade as well. I mm. mean, I'm more at home than if you went into Greg's Bakery and said you're going on Graham Norton to somebody. I'm more relaxed than they would be, yeah. but I'm not as relaxed as I might appear. Right. Well, I, I, we well, do a very good job. I, I wanted to put my best foot forward and do a zinger, zing, and because I'm, I'm capable of a zing, and um, you know, I'm trying to zing. And then uh, we're talking about a stormtrooper that I had in my house. Yes, a, 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 a real life big model yeah, of a stormtrooper. Uh, and we were with the Star Wars That's people. Right, yeah. And I say, oh, yes, no, I did have a stormtrooper, but I got rid of it because there wasn't enough room and I replaced it for a full size Rob Bryden. <laughs> right. And then I, and then as the, uh, and then I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then as the uh, the titles are rolling, I'm like, that's really fucking rude. That's a rude thing to say. And then I side up to Rob and I go, I just realised I did a mean thing there, mate. I'm I'm really really sorry. I I didn't mean to do a mean thing. And then I'm just like, just recoiling with embarrassment. Yeah, well, you were more apologetic. You were you were you were. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. From my side of it. You've done your thing. Now, it's so interesting. You say you're intimidated. Well, I'm sat on the sofa. Robbie Williams, for God's sake, is doing his big bloody song. Then he comes over. So now we got the big rock guy. He sat down. And, uh, and so we're, we're, it's all nice. And then you said that. And yeah, on a, I did I did kind of go, oh, OK. I mean, listen, it's, it's fine, right? Da, da, da. And I thought of a response. Go on, I was, what was it? I was going to say we were going to have a sculpture of Robbie's ego in our house, but there wasn't enough room. And this is how my mind works, right? right. I went, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, you should have. I went, I'm not going to do that because then I, I just, and I, I, maybe I should maybe be funny, but I thought I don't want to, I don't want to put you down. I just, that, right. that was yeah, my yeah, thought yeah. process. Anyway, that's about five years ago, six years ago, it's yeah. pre-pandemic. Then about three weeks ago, it was very recent. We're at we're at Mr. Williams has a he throws big parties for himself. It's the only way he gets to see his friends. And I'm sat there, and 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 you're over there, and we make eye contact. Uh -huh. And then he comes over, and the first thing he says to me is, "I'm so sorry about what I said on Graham Norton." It wasn't Jonathan Ross. It was Graham Norton because I remember. I remember in the wings before going on, they had an R two D two there. A proper one. And it was at the old BBC? Yes, it was Graham Norton. OK, you're right. I'm wrong. Daisy Ridley and was it John Boyega? Yeah, yeah. Yes. May and maybe. I was on with Ruth Jones and we did, we, did, we did some Star Wars dialogue as Bryn and Nessa. Yeah, so anyway, so yeah. at the party, I came over. Oh, yeah. But there's been other times when I've... When I've um... So he came over and he said, I'm so sorry. And then he said, can I do your podcast? Can I do your podcast? So this is this whole thing happened because of is that. a way of making up to me something that was just fine. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I've done I've I've done that before when I saw I like saw Simon Pegg out one night. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, there's he's a funny. I want to go and do a funny with them and uh, I tapped him on his shoulder and he'd got sort of like um, the, one of the zombie movies out at the time. Yes. And I said, uh, see, your film's doing well. I said, it's good. Is it Three Nights at Nebworth good? And you said that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and I think he thought I yeah. meant it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the evening descended from that point. Really? Like, you know, like I've had a sculpture of Robbie Williams' ego put in. <laughs> and it's like, and every time I went back to, to go back over to their table full of people, it was just, it just got worse. I was just digging the, 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 the grave got bigger and bigger and bigger. Do you still do voiceovers? Specsavers. Specsavers. I'm the voice of Felix the cat right now. Why the hell are you doing that? Uh, because I Aren't wanted... there hotels you could be designing? Yeah, 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 there, there are. Felix the cat, the, as in the cat food? Yeah, yeah. 
Don't well, let a dog have cat food. I've no, I've got, I've got eight dogs, two cats. We know that, yes. So I've actually always wanted to write a TV jingle. <laughs> right. Uh, I've always wanted to have a <laughs> uh, one of my songs sung in a stadium about a football player or a manager. Really? Yeah. Uh, and Angels is now sang to oh. Ange Postacoglu, Postacoglu at uh, Spurs. How does it, how does it, what are the words? How does it uh, go? And, uh, you can keep your Potticino, um, Dodo and Mourinho, and even Christian Gross. Uh, it's big Ange ball, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm chuffed about that. Yeah. And then back in the day, Ant and Deck had this idea for a TV show, a quiz, and I'm like, can I write the, can I write the thing? Yeah. I didn't quite actually nail it, so I never got to. But I've always wanted to do a, um, a advert. So on Felix, is it just your voice or is it? Is it's them... great to be a cat. I came up with that. That's you? Yeah, yeah. 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 We've got more in common than I realised. Yeah, come on, Rob. All right, let's 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 let everybody go oh, home. With that, he stormed out. Um, <laughs> I'm worried about your dogs in America. They're fine. Was that a Kim Wilde song? Dogs in America? Yeah. Oh. We're the dogs in America. Oh, whoa. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. We're the dogs in America. Everybody live, live for the music, music go round. Ah. Everybody live. See, you want to do, you want to meet a funny person and you want to do funny with them. I just want to sing with you. I see you and I just want to sing. Everybody live for the music go, go round. What does that mean? It doesn't matter. It was Kim Wilde. She was young. She was new. Mm -hmm. We are young. Heartache to heartache. Who is that? We hear Pat Benatar. Love, Love is a battlefield. Oh, I did that, but I did it for Jaffa Cakes. They what? are, they are sponge, sponge with a little orange. Is that a real thing? They've been in our lives for so long. Love is a Jaffa cake. It doesn't exist, but I actually, I actually put it up on my Instagram. Did you? Did you? Uh, I offered myself to McVitie's or whoever it was. To, to you should do it. No, you should do a whole music. series. Though. You should do. You should do a whole thing. I'm gonna. To... Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. We, it's a sponge, sponge with a little orange. <laughs> and on that, we have to finish the longest podcast I've ever recorded. Talk about intimidation. I was a bit intimidated at the top. I was a bit there at the beginning, but no, I got there as we, as we got I, going. I was, I was intimidated too. But uh... we're just two guys, just, just two, just two intimidated guys. I've got one dog. He's got ten. Mm -hmm. Other than that. I'm a bit older, but other than that, stop recording, goodbye.